have I been muted this whole time? I thought I unclicked it. Hi, welcome. Welcome to Diane Writes. And I was like thanking all the raiders. Holy cow. Um, uh, Karin and Shirad Fox, thank you so much for the raids. I was just agreeing with uh, Karin's observation that number of foxes is a good way to measure greatness. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. And everybody's here. Hello. Uh, hello, Second Hand Samurai. Hello, Dragon Love Water. Hello, Natalia. Hello, Siobhan. Hello, Barbarossa. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Okay, you can hear me now, though, right? I had some tech set up, so the issues. This is why I'm late. Sorry. I may run a couple minutes over today, depending on what happens then. So, all right. Awesome. And Dizzy is here, too. Awesome. Thought you were going to forget you. No, I was just reading down the chat, hun. Takes a while. That's cool, though. I'm so glad you guys are all here. Um, today, um, I'm going to talk about NaNoWriMo and what it is, and uh, a lot of you probably already know what it is, but we're going to say it anyway, just in case there's any people who don't in the chat. And, um, you know, we're going to talk about uh, strategies for getting ready, why you should do it. Um, I, I do it every year. I love it. Dillian is here. Hello. Welcome. Explain it to me like a 10-year to a 5-year-old. Okay, listen, stupid. <laughs> That's how that actually starts. You really want me to do that? I'm a mom. Don't, don't, I don't know how 10-year-olds talk to 5-year-olds. Don't. <laughs> do that. No. No, we're not going to do that. You guys aren't stupid and I'm not going to address you like that. Okay. And then um, after that, I'm also going to show you what I'm doing with the uh, timelines function right now, which is, I think, really freaking awesome. So, okay, so let's start with what is NaNoWriMo? NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month, and it's a marathon for writers where the challenge is to write a 50,000 word novel in a single month. And of course, when people haven't heard of this challenge before, they're like, are you out of your fucking mind? No, no, no. Actually, you really can. It's it's not as hard as it looks because, um, I mean, like, it's a challenge. Don't get me wrong. And life gets in the way. So if you can't do it, you shouldn't feel like if you don't do the 50,000 words, you shouldn't feel bad about that. But it's only 1,667 words a day, which is about the length of a typical English essay you would write in class. So it's it, you got to do an essay a day. And some people have no trouble with this. I am not one of these people. I am a much slower writer than a lot of other people out there. Some people are churning out a novel a month and putting it on Amazon and making a killing. I am not doing that because I cannot write that fast. So for me, uh, NaNoWriMo is a way to focus my discipline, right? And get the writing done. <laughs> Why do I even watch these things then, says Barbarossa? I just realized the weirdness of the word novel, meaning small or minimal accomplishment for something that can be super hard. Yeah, it can be super hard. It is hard. Words are hard, right, guys? Words are hard. Yeah. Uh, Rob Alderland. Time for glasses, I think. Rob Alderland. And hello. I don't uh, recall seeing you in the chat before, so welcome. Says, I am slow too. Yeah, you know what? The elephant only gets eaten one bite at a time. So it really is okay if you're slow, right? You can still do it. Right. Um, Siobhan says, no, it isn't that hard as long as you can relax. <laughs> well, it depends, right? Some people have more challenges than others, and that's okay. That's okay. Right? So in order to facilitate this, National Novel Writing Month has all kinds of resources for writers. There's an amazing support system, and the only thing I've ever found that's anything close to it is the World Anvil community, especially when we're in a community challenge or in World Ember or something like that. Because, you know, it, it's, it makes a solitary, a normally solitary activity into a group activity, and then it's much more fun, right? And other people who are as crazy as you 
who are struggling with the same struggles that you are, who they're all trying the same thing, whether they're, you know, experienced award-winning novelists, which uh, there are, there are many uh, award-winning and even best-selling novelists who do National Novel Writing Month every year, um, down to, I have always had this idea for a novel, I want to write it, I'm going to give it a try. Right, so, yeah. <laughs> yes, words are hard, agrees uh, Shy Red Fox. Rob's meaning to watch my stream for a while. Well, cool. Welcome. I hope you enjoy it. You know, um, I'm open to feedback. Um, I do change things from time to time based on that. So, yeah, let me know if there's any. And, and as always, if you have any questions, just ask them. That's what we're here for, right? Uh, Siobhan says, I was posting in the Camp Nano uh, channel on the World Anvil Discord about how to get 50k words in a month while working a full-time job because, yes, Siobhan did that. Last year, Siobhan decided that she was going to finally write a novel like she's always wanted to do. And she she determined she was going to do it. I'm like, okay, we're going to do this, right? And how she did this, right? Because she's a very competitive person. I'm not as much. I'm, I'm sort of competitive, but I like a friendly competition, right? I'm, I'm more into the let's build up the team and do this together. But um, but she's very much like, you know, I want to achieve something and that's cool. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this. So what she decided she was going to do, since I had successfully done nano for several years, she figured that she was just going to beat my daily word count, whatever it was. Right. So if I wrote 1500 words that day, she had to write at least 1600. You know, if I wrote 2000 words that day, she had to do 2100, whatever. Right. And she did it. She absolutely did it, and she did it before I did, right? So, and I did it last year in a personal record time, which is why I ended up on World Anvil. I bought myself the master membership as a present for achieving a very successful NaNoWriMo. So, you know, you can do it, right? It was her first year, and she did it. So you can do it. You just got to be really dedicated, right? And that's part of what we're going to talk about over the next uh, month or two you know, rest of September, early October, you know, we're going to talk about how to arrange things in your life to make it easier for you to write. I actually teach a course on this. It's called uh, Writing in the Cracks, How to Find Time for Writing When You Have None. And a lot of it comes from my NaNoWriMo experience. And uh, you can get that at the uh, Rambo Academy for Wayward Writers if you want nine bucks, it's, you know. But, uh, but I'm going to share some of that in the streams too. Right, so Delian says, "Poor elephant." He's totally right. <laughs> um, Barbarossa says, "Just finished listening to a podcast on World War One mountain warfare." Which, oh god, no! Oh god, no! Oh yes, goes to write a book on this now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, for me, I'd always wanted to be a writer, but finishing things was a problem. I would constantly start new projects, and then I would get distracted by another project, especially when I didn't have a schedule and progress. You know, a novel's a big, it's a big thing, right? So when you're doing it in little tiny pieces, it feels like it takes forever. And, you know, if you don't have a, a, a schedule for your writing, if you don't give a little bit of time to it every day that you can. Some people say you must write every day. Well, in nano, you pretty much must write every day. In the rest of life, we probably can't do that. So we must write when we can, right? So we we need to make time to do that. And um, you can really, you can arrange things most of the time to clear out a lot of stuff in your schedule when you're working on nano for a month. It's much more difficult to do it over the long term. But once you've done that, in NaNoWriMo, you've established a habit of writing. And I find that if I haven't written at least something every day, I feel antsy, right? Because I feel like I have not done something that I was supposed to do that day. And, but I also write to relax, right? So I don't, I don't allow it to become a pressure. That's the other side of the coin. Some of us respond better to get your acting gear, right? And some of us respond better to don't be so hard on your damn self. And there, there's tools to support that on either end. I have a limit 
Like I, I need a kick in the ass to get started because I'm a procrastinator. But um, if I get too much pressure, my brain just goes eh, and I can't do anything. So I don't allow myself to like I take it seriously. I do my word count. I'm pretty dedicated about it. But if I don't get my word count done that day, eh, I'll catch up tomorrow. You just can't do that too many days, right? So, yeah. Barbarossa says, I used to write books on zombies, like everything was zombies. That's cool. Zombies are cool. After high school, my life went into a series of depressive, life-draining jobs until I got to live with my dad. Amen. I hear you there. Um, this is one reason why I'm 45 and the writing career is happening now, right? It took me many years to get my crap together on it, and that's part of it, you know? Um, so I have slowly been rebuilding that. I want to do Nano this year, but I need to figure out a plot. We're going to do that. Let me, uh, that, that brings up a, a good point that I'm going to show you here just a second what have i captured have i captured anything no i have not captured anything let's see okay you're gonna look at that ugly screen for just a minute because i need the envelope calendar i'm gonna ca capture that first because hefe in his genius oh there we go okay has created event calendars for several of the events and one of the events that he has put on the schedule is asc national novel writing month events so we're gonna have a look at that because it lays out NaNoWriMo also sponsors a thing called Preptober where in September and October you spend you know one week focusing on things to set yourself up for writing success right so we're gonna loosely follow that schedule and I'm gonna in the next few weeks here uh, this stream will cover part of that for we'll cover that topic for part of each of those streams so next week we'll be talking about developing your story idea right a lot of people are like well you know where do you get ideas we're going to talk about that right um how do you know an idea is good we're going to talk about that too right um how do you develop that idea into an actual story you know that kind of thing so and then we'll be moving on to creating characters complex characters with uh interesting motivations and then the next week after that <clears throat> on the 30th we'll be talking about constructing your plot um i have something really cool planned for that so i'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys and then right um building a strong world this is something a lot of world anvil participants do not require anvilites do not necessarily need to know how to build a strong world but what i'm going to talk about is how to incorporate that into your pros because building it on your world anvil site and then incorporating it into pros is two entirely different animals um I think I've got a lot of good stuff to say about this. One thing that my reviews say consistently about my writing is that my world building is excellent. So let me share what I do and, you know, maybe you'll get awesome reviews that way too. Right? Um, then organizing your life for writing and finding and managing your time, those kind of overlap. And we'll talk about those in particular. And then the week before Nano, we don't have a focus topic. So if you have any, you know, questions or areas you're having trouble with, that's what we're going to focus that on. All right, then. So eventually my stream manager is going to come back up so I can see what the hell I'm doing. All right. Siobhan says, I have a novel idea, which I started back in high school and I've tried doing several times, throwing out what I had written each time, but the idea has stuck with me for decades. Then you should write it. If it stays with you, you should write it. Um, Siobhan says that she works with both, right? Um, I don't know what she means by that because I'm beyond that in a conversation. I'm sorry. Um, and then she says, every word written is a word more than you had before. And that's the philosophy behind National Novel Writing Month. It's that you're going to dedicate time to writing. You're going to give it the focus that we often don't. Because one thing we tend to do, I know... I'm terrible for this is 
we put it off, right? We're like, okay, well, you know, I got to go to my job and then the family needs time. And then I got to, you know, cook dinner and, oh, we need something at the store and the dishes need to be done. And, oh, you know, there was this stream I wanted to see. So I'll pay attention to that. And, oh, my favorite TV shows on. And now, oh, I have half an hour before I go to bed and I can write in that time. No, you can't. <laughs> you're not going to get any writing done doing that. I mean, you'll get a little bit done, but you're not going to get a lot done. So we're going to talk about ways to, you know, create the space and give it the attention that it deserves. Right? Yes. Um, Barbara Rosa says, I kind of do. And I believe that was about the know about world building, right? Uh, Siobhan says to Barbarossa, you have strong worlds. What you need is how to integrate it into your prose. Yes. And like I said, that's a different story. Because just because you know it in your head and you have it down on an article on World Anvil doesn't mean that you are translating that in a way that a reader, if they picked up your book off the bookshelf, would be able to visualize it. So I'm going to help you with that. I'm pretty good at that. Okay, um, Barbara says, same, this world of Duena has haunted me since after graduation. This World War I fantasy world where soldiers, mages, and gods act side by side in a conflict that threatens to destroy civilization. Yeah, yeah, I like your idea. You've been talking about it for months now, I think, and I think it's freaking cool. So I'm looking forward to you writing it. And yeah, I would help. So, okay, so first of all, I guess I'll open the floor now for questions because I evangelize about National Novel Writing Month a little bit. So um, do you guys have any questions about it? Is there, what are you looking to get out of National Novel Writing Month if you're going to participate? Since summer camp, says Barbarossa. No, you've been talking about your uh, war of gods and, and mages before that, I'm sure. Barbarossa doesn't need a kick in the butt, in my opinion, Siobhan. He's quite capable of doing it. He's inspired to do it. What he needs is to have support for his self-confidence. And that's also part of what we're here for. I really, I would never have written a word if it were not for that kind of support. Um, what is it? It's Margaret Atwood, right, who said, um, if I worried about perfection, I would never write a word. You know, um, that that's one thing about Nano. It's it's your first draft. First drafts are always garbage. There is never been a first draft. OK, there might have been one or two first drafts in the history of writing that were perfect upon their appearance on a page. Right. Nobody writes a good first draft. And that's OK. The idea is to get your ideas down, to start building the framework from which you can create a novel that's like worth reading. And then there's also a matter of what's your goal, right? Because if you're wanting to write something cool for your friends or something that you're going to put on, you know, your World Anvil site to share with people or on Royal Road or something like that, which is like, you know, open fiction for the world. Okay. Something you're gonna, gonna write for your friends? You don't need to worry about stuff like grammar. Who gives a shit? Seriously, nobody cares, right? Your, your, your friends are reading it for the story. They're not gonna give a crap about that, right? If you're gonna put on Royal Road, you're gonna wanna tighten that up a little bit because uh, random strangers on the internet can be assholes, right? So you, you wanna make sure your ducks are in a row for that, right? If you're gonna publish it and try to sell it, that's a different level again, and you're going to have to edit it pretty extensively. But you don't have to worry about any of that during Nano. Nano is about getting the ideas down on paper or on a screen, so you have something to work with and create a piece of writing from there. So it's it's like raw word vomit. Don't, don't overthink it, you know? Dragon Love Water says, I'm going to put words into existence. The ga then gaze in horror once it is over and rewrite the entire thing. That is how it is done. That is how it is done. Um, I'm really good at nano because I use so many adverbs that you uh, you, you can't um, function, right? 
this has actually gotten it's gotten more challenging actually for me to do nano as I've gotten better as a writer because I can't bring myself to put all those adverbs down as much anymore because I know that that sucks so I don't you know but I mean like I really don't have to worry about it and I don't uh, I don't edit as I go as much when I'm writing for nano I've even done things like okay here's a couple of tips if you wrote the words count them so even if you decide okay this entire chapter is garbage I can't do anything with it I have no idea where the fucking story is going from here take it copy it um, delete it copy right and move it to the end of your document and leave it there right if you're writing on uh, on Word or, or Google Docs you can do that if you're writing on manuscripts then create a file and and in the listing and call it crap and put it all in there right file it under G for garbage but count the words because you still wrote them and there's still words you ha didn't have before you can edit later right um, if you are in the middle of a word sprint that you're doing with a write-in and you can't find the, the name, it's just not occurring to you right now, you know you wrote it down in chapter one and you're working on chapter five and you don't remember, fuck it. Put a couple of X's and move on. You can look it up later. Just, you know, you, you know you have to look that up. If you put a couple of X's, th there's no word that starts with XX. Then you can use the find replace function and you can find XX and you can replace it with the name that's appropriate. You know, um, you know, don't, don't think to yourself, is this good? No, it's not good. None of it's good. It's all garbage. It just let it go. Get the idea down. You can worry about the phrasing later. Yeah. Rob says, I finished Nano last year, but it burnt me out for a month. Not sure I'm going to do it this year. Maybe take it a little less aggressively, right? Um, for me, I often find that Nano burns me out for writing for a month too. And that's why World Ember is amazing. Because then I get to shift gears. Instead of working on the prose of the, of the writing that I'm trying to do, I leave it. And then I this year it worked just spectacularly for me. I've threw myself into the world building and started creating articles for the things that I had been writing about instead. And, you know, that because of that shift of gears, by the time February rolled around, which is usually when I start seriously editing, I was ready. You know? So yeah, it, that's okay. Right? You don't have to do it. If, if you find, never do anything that is more harmful to your writing than helpful. If you find that you personally think that nano is just too much damn pressure that you put on yourself despite the encouragement despite the fact that everybody says it's really okay if you don't write 50,000 words then don't do it right don't do it don't stress yourself out like that don't give yourself a complex about your writing your writing should always be fun right but for me it was exactly the the inspiration support and kick in the ass that I required right I did my first NaNoWriMo I, this will be my 10th year and I'm still working on the novel that I started then actually it was uh, when I first wrote it it was a fan fiction piece for a spell jammer the spell jammer d, d campaign setting I've since been changing the world taking out the stuff that is you know wizards property changing what naturally changes with the story altering some things that don't make sense creating different physics stuff like that right and I am now putting it on ma on manuscripts on World Anvil with the intention of this is the final draft after I'm done this edit it's going to publication so and that's okay right because I'm one of these people who works on 17 projects at the same time it'll all get done eventually but I have to do that in order to not burn out right As Siobhan says, unless you're friends with Sable. Glarvol <laughs> uh, or Glarvole. And hello, I know you, but I don't know how to pronounce your name properly, so please let me know. Um, says, you have to build the skeleton before you can flush it out, otherwise you'll never end up with a person. Yeah, you gotta start somewhere. 
So you might as well start and then put it down there and then you can work with it and it's Play-Doh and you can sculpt it, you know? Uh, Barbarossa says, one thing I like, and I don't call it world builder's disease because I feel that it will be very important to the book, is studying military uniforms and certain practices to gain insight. Okay, um, only you know what's good for your plot. I realize that the um, advice, um, okay, when, when you're trying to create world building, the, the agile world building advice that Janet and Dimitri give, which is excellent advice, is don't over worry about details. But maybe those details are important. And you have to, you're the writer, right? You have to know. I find that if you are drawing from uh, historical periods in any way, if you know a little bit about the details, you can create an aura of authenticity. I have to know a lot more about firearms than I ever thought I would have to know in order to make Weird West feel real. Because my characters are gunslingers. They know a lot about guns. There are a lot of people out there who know a lot about guns. I don't know a lot about guns, but I had to learn because they have to know. And I have to at least sound like I know what I'm talking about. You're never going to get it all right. There's going to be some expert out there, which you are not. You're a novelist. You know, that's what you're an expert in. You're not an expert in, uh, you know, military history of the 17th century, right? You don't know that. But, you know, so there will always be some technical nerd who is going to go, that's totally wrong because X and Y and Z. But the thing is, you, the most people have to believe that you know what you're talking about. So you have to have a grasp, right? So if you think that uniforms are important because you have to have a grasp, I think, you know, it's a military drama that might be important, especially with the period you're dealing with. Dragon Love Water says, I'm going to go back and be like, what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> totally been there. <laughs> Sharon Fox says, oh, I, uh, I, remem I remember thoughts of counting that deleted stuff. Never. Oi. No. Yes. Count it. Count it. Just put it at the bottom of the page and because that's part of your rough draft and it counts because you're just writing a rough draft it doesn't have to be perfect count it anyway yeah just you know don't uh, you know when, when the month's done delete it because it's at the end of the document you go okay after this point i'm deleting everything um some people uh put it in white so that it just blanks out on their page and they don't see it. I can't do that. That hurts my OCD because then there's these big holes in my document and I'm like, but something's missing. So I put it at the end. Siobhan says, I have some of in my original manuscripts where I'm not going to use in this book I'm working on, but I'm not going to lose what I wrote because it could be used in a later novel. Okay, here's some advice. This is something I start to do. When you're working on a particular novel or a particular series and you wrote, wrote something and you know you can't use it, but you feel like there's something in it that's worth keeping, you take it and you copy it into that document and you call that document bits and uh, bits and you know bits and bytes or odds and sods or you know um extras and you put that stuff in there and you can if if you don't delete it if you keep it it really can be beneficial later on one of the decisions i made with this particular novel that i'm working on right a few good elves is that it was too big so i had to take out a bunch of the side plot stuff that was being done by other characters and kind of focus on the perspective of my protagonist but um, that ended up being about half of a novella, which was later published. So, um, yeah, don't don't throw it away. It's good stuff. It was a good story. It needed to be told. It just wasn't part of the story I was immediately trying to tell. It's stuff that I needed to know as a writer to make that story work and believable, but it wasn't part of that story. It was a different story, and that's okay. Hey DM Stretch, welcome. We are talking Nano Rimo and writing today. Did you miss the spicy chocolate challenge? No, you did not. We are doing that on Friday on Aaron's stream, Ask an Old GM, 1 p.m. Pacific. So um, Aaron and I are going to be, we've been waiting for it to come in, but a bunch of people during summer camp ate like spicy chocolate. I'm trying to get him to save it 
but he's not listening to me because he wants to do everything now because he has no patience. So <laughs> fine, whatever. Right. But we're going to do it on Friday. So just because he had to prove that, you know, Navy, Navy boys can do anything that, you know, air airmen can do. Right. So that's why we're doing it. I'm doing it because orcs eat spicy food, really spicy food in my story. So I figured I should expose myself to some really spicy food. Okay. It's Glar like call a car and vol like mole. Okay, Glarvel. I did have it right the first time. Good to know. Rob says he's got to go. He says, I loved your stream. Thank you. Um, I'm AOA Stormbringer. Iway? Ha. I weigh on World Anvil. I use for the words too. That's cool. I don't actually do for the words. Coffee is really, Coffee Quills is really into for the words. I think I would just end up getting distracted if I did that. So I don't, but I understand how it can be very helpful to other people. And certainly if you respond well to, uh, you know, games and immediate rewards, I definitely recommend it. Right? So. That's great. And I will look for you on World Anvil. Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining me. DM Stretch says, Oh, I just got an interesting email from Paizo regarding their playtest. Oh. Sean will be missing it. The chocolate stream? Because, yes, she ha she's a witness in a an event and has to go to court and testify on that day, which is crappy. Um... Yeah, Dragon Love Water says, you mean the chair force? Well, that's what Zog said. <laughs> yeah, coffee is on the staff on For the Words. Yeah, I knew that, actually. I should have said that. And Barbara also made a flag for his world today. All right. So I've kind of talked about everything I want to talk about in terms of uh, NaNoWriMo today. If you guys have any questions or comments or things you'd like to know more about, now is the time. And if not, oh, okay. Author Goddess says, hate ape HP so much size. <laughs> Thank you for the posture check, Barbarossa. And hello, Author Goddess. Good to see you. Why is the sky blue? Because it has ozone at its top layer. And ozone is blue. Well, it's not actually blue. Ozone absorbs and refracts the blue spectrum of light. Bet you didn't think I knew that, huh? 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 That's an astrophysics question. Okay, I don't know which one, what you mean by HP. Are you talking about, uh, author goddess, are you talking about HP, the computer? Uh, company Hubert Packard or are you talking about HP as in Harry Potter love to know <laughs> DM stretch says I might look at that Paizo playtest and maybe include it in my stream tomorrow well why don't you do that because I would be very interested in hearing more about that and Barbarossa says oh wow you're really smart I wasn't I wasn't expecting a non-sarcastic answer I'm gen gently surprised <laughs> <laughs> then why are the seas blue, says Siobhan, <laughs> guys. <laughs> um, because the water uh, being clear reflects the color of the sky. That's why. Because it's, you know, like a mirror when you see it from a distance. Because of this reflective surface. Sea is brown where I am, says DM Stretch. That's because uh, it is clear enough to show the bottom or has a bunch of sentiment or perhaps algae in it where you are. Or reflects the mountains, I don't know. <clears throat> um, we have a lake near here called Kalamalka Lake, loosely translated from the um, indigenous language around here. It means uh, lake of many colors. And it it's very interesting because I, I don't even know exactly why it does it, but um, depending on where it's at, it reflects different colors. At the peak time of year, 
like early summer it's you can see patches of turquoise and green and dark blue and purplish and light green it's, it's really interesting and i don't really know whether it's uh you know different colors of uh rocks changing what uh what the wavelength of light uh is being absorbed or reflected you know or whether it's something about the you know currents of the water i i don't know too much sediment ah uh, okay fair enough says dm stretch yeah there you go got that label out go buy jamie's mug this is our mug actually but jamie made the the wonderful art for it that, that's jamie buckley who did that this is Toy Soldier Saga merch. I don't think Aaron has this up on the site yet. We've been a bit distracted with other things, but I will tell him to get a ship together if people want it because I think it's awesome. Call this my streaming mug. This one will last me the whole stream. There's a floaty in my mug though. Got it. Okay. It means Lake of Many Colors Lake. Yeah, it kind of does actually. <laughs> Yeah, indigo, isn't it? Yep, could be depth of the water too. Wondered about that. Yep. Delian says we have a small island called Linositama. Bird poop land. <laughs> Take a wild guess where that name came from. Uh huh. Don't you love it when things are aptly named? Hey, Canada has all. We have we have a, a town called Moose Jaw. We have a town called Medicine Hat. Oh, I, this this is this one's cool. This one's cool. I laughed my ass off the first time I saw this. Um, the location of the most of the Weird West so far has taken place in is a place it called the Compel Valley, which actually exists in Saskatchewan, right? And um, there was a place called Fort Capel, and that's the first that I saw of it. Before I didn't realize what it was called till I saw that, and I laughed. And people looked at me and they're like, "What?" I says, you realize that means Fort What's-Its-Name, right? <laughs> that is Fort What's-Its-Name in French, basically. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the thing. The uh, Cree of the area had a much cooler name for it, which I don't remember right now, but it was a significant meeting place for them. I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah. All right, since we've degenerated into the land of ridiculous by now, and uh, we're close to the end of the first hour, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a short break because, you know, buy or break comes early. And then when I come back, um, unless there are more questions, I'm going to start right into a sprint. Reminds me of the mountain in Terry Pratchett's Discworld named Your Finger, You Fool. <laughs> oh, Terry Pratchett's brilliant. There are so many weird names like that. There are, there are uh, other things like, this is something writers often worry about coming up with original names for stuff. Don't bother. Nobody else does. Right? <laughs> you know, where do you think the name New York came from? Because there was a place called York and they went, this is New York. You know, New Orleans, same deal, right? Orleans is a, a city in France that has been there since the Middle Ages, right? Montreal. Montreal also exists in France. Montreal was a significant place in uh, the uh, um, Albigensian Crusade that got, like, sacked by the Crusaders. <laughs> you know, nobody comes up with original names. It's, it's, it's a standing joke in uh, David Weber's uh, Honorverse series that everything is fucking named Landing. Right? Everything is landing. Why? Because that's the place they landed when they landed on the planet. Everything is landing. Yeah. Names are, don't have to be that hard, man. But but there's some weird, weird shit that people come up with, too. Barbarossa says, I have a land, I've named uh, my name, um, my world, Dwerna, which means deer land or land of deer. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's how we name stuff. You know? Or we name it for people, right? Vancouver was named for the guy who found it. 
supposedly. Okay, Vancouver was named for the white guy who found it. Let's be honest here, right? The The First Nations people were quite aware that it was there for a long time. Right? It was a significant meeting place for them too. So, yeah. Um, DM Stretch says they used to name things by grabbing a local and and pointing at it and writing down the first thing they said. They just so happened to get a sarcastic lo local. Yep. Yep, that's great. Um, it, Canada was named like that. It's seriously, I'm not even kidding. Right? Um, Canada actually is an anglicization of a word that I think originally meant village. Right? Um, don't quote me on that, though. It's been a while since grade 10 social studies. But, yeah. <clears throat> and yes, York used to be the capital of England hundreds of years ago. Till it got sacked. Yep. Community. Canada means community, apparently. Thanks, Siobhan. You, she probably remembers better than I do. Uh, Barbarossa says, my hometown is called Dickinson, North Dakota. It was called Freight Stop 15 or Pleasant Valley Freight Stop. Everything's freaking Pleasant Valley. You know what? There was a community here that was part of what it, it is. It's part of now what is now my hometown, right? That was called Pleasant Valley, right? And we still have a Pleasant Valley road that runs between this community and the next community. So, yeah, and the Pleasant Valley area. Everything's Pleasant Valley. Yep. It was named after the president of the railroad that came through. Uh, strangely enough, uh, Pleasant Valley existed when all this was was a railroad stop, too. So that's interesting. Okay, 10 to the hour. I'm taking a break. I'll see you in a couple minutes, guys. I'm having a great time. I hope you are, too.
and we're back. All right. Natalia said, my hometown is called Sweet Lake City because it was a sweet lake. That's cool. Yep. Uh, Siobhan says, here is a small historical fact about my hometown, Vanderhoof. It's Dutch for of the farm, which was very appropriate since it was the first agricultural settlement in the province. Was it now? I wonder about that personally because <clears throat> I know that it took a while to break into the... Um, uh, um, BC North so you know but eh whatever it's a claim to fame <laughs> the town grew and in 1926 the village of Vanderhoof was born with the arrival of World War II many young men left and Vanderhoof came to a standstill <coughs> excuse me and Barbarossa says you scared me <laughs> I'm sorry I scared you okay so since there are no further questions about Nano for the time being, I'll uh, just quickly uh, show you how to sign up if you want to do that. Mostly this is also of interest to people who may be watching the archive later on. That's interesting, Aaron. I didn't even know that. My hometown uh, was originally named for Pleasant Valley, but the city founder, Lord William Holt, my great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-great-grandfather, whatever, three greats, changed it when it incorporated to name it after his friend, Lord Angus Vernon. Hmm, neat. All right, so if you decide you would like to Sign up for National Novel Writing Month. It's nanorimo.org. I will put that in the chat. That's where you sign up. Okay, and then you uh, go to My Nano. You can edit this stuff. This is like your bio, places for people to find you, influences and favorites, right? This is all personal achievement and writing badges that... Did I not get the update progress every day? Oh well. This was for Camp Nano. What does Nano stand for again? National Novel Writing Month, Delian answers. Yes. You bet. Right? Why November? People aren't doing anything in November except maybe getting ready for Christmas, you know? Okay, so you, you know, would fill that out. Projects. This is the important one. As you can see, I've been working on some novels for a while. Now, the official rules of the challenge, rules, okay, <clears throat> say that you should start a brand new novel and you should write 50,000 words on that novel in a brand new first draft. Lots of people don't do that. Nobody cares if you don't do that. Okay? Nobody gives a damn. What they care, the spirit is to write 50,000 fresh words that you didn't have before. Right? So, I've done that in a variety of ways. I started, these were all started novels. This was a nonfiction book that I started writing. I wrote 50,000 words for it, and I still haven't done anything with it since then. <laughs> yep. Um, this one, I split the uh, process of trying to finish this thing with my first draft of my first Weird West story. Right, but as you can see, I even had a different name for it at the time. Then I did this novel two years in a row. Well, I did it for Nano and then I did it for Camp. 
I still haven't done anything with this novel because I feel like I've written myself into a hole with that one and I need a different approach. This is my uh, raw, like, hard science fiction novel, which I started. Then I've done stories for the Weird West, mostly. Not entirely. Um, one of these stories in one of those years was called uh, The World's More Full of Weeping, and it too has been published. Um, I, of course, published all the Weird West stuff as a... a web serial before it was published to novel. Oh, see, there we go. The world's more full of weeping. That's the card that they, a collectible card they eventually made for it. That's what that image is, right? Um, Homefront was the novel or novella that I was talking about where I started with a bunch of stuff that I couldn't use in the novel and made a story out of it. So as you can see, I did a whole bunch of shit there, different things. So yeah. Right? And came back to old novels. So. Yeah. And you don't, uh, nobody, nobody gives a damn if you actually start a new novel. As a matter of fact, there's, where are they here? In the badges. These are self-awarded badges, right? So there's one for being a nano-traditionalist. I don't know if they had it this time for the no I guess they didn't do it for camp but among these badges you'll have um, nano traditionalist which is okay I'm gonna do my 50,000 words from a fresh new novel and nano rebel which is I'm doing anything that isn't that right so I do that all the time I see that I'm missing stuff on chat Twenty twenty says Natalia, but I don't know what for. Done with HP, impressive customer service. Ah, we were talking about computers. Ugh, yeah, I feel your pain there. Uh, DM Stretch says I'm more into writing for TTRPGs. Novel writing isn't really for me. As Siobhan pointed out, Aaron did TTRPG work last year, and he will be doing that again this year, working on our worlds. So that's his plan. So don't you worry about that. Already updated my nano, says Author Goddess. She's ahead of the game. That's awesome. I probably should get my shit together on that one. Maybe I'll do it right now and show you guys the process. Uh, Siobhan says, I'm trying to update for my work in progress, but it won't seem to let me. I don't know why you always have problems with the nano site. I don't have these problems. I don't understand. I'm sorry. I can't help you. And Dazzlecat says, hi all. Hello. Welcome. We are talking about National Novel Writing Month, which we're going to start doing work for over my next few streams here. All right, so I think I'm going to update my project. I haven't used this particular soundtrack before. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty funky. I wanted something different. Announce new project. What is the name of my project? To know your enemy conclusion. That's my project. And then perhaps Borderland, which is my next Weird West story. What's the project status? Prepping. Yes, I'm in preparation. Well, Do I want prep or in progress? I'm, I'm prepping. We'll say we're prepping right now because that's what I'm doing. Let's be honest. How much privacy do I want? Public. You're welcome to find out. But you can set this so only you or your writing buddies can see it. What type of project is this? See, now they've expanded this. Novel, short stories, memoirs, script, nonfiction, poetry, other. We're going to stick with novel because to know your enemy is a novel. Associate this with an event. Optional. Well, I'm associating it with NaNoWriMo 2020. On to my goal. Because you've chosen Nano 2020, some information cannot be edited. Namely, what type of goal is this? Writing. You can also have an editing goal. You can also have a, uh, you know, prep goal. There's different things you can do. And then you can set your word count or pages or... 
um, chapters or whatever, right? So my goal, 50,000 words. When's my start date? First November. When's my end date? End of November. This can all be different if you're working on different things. And I'll show you that with a, a camp project, just so you can see. On to details. What are is the genre? They still are kind of shit with the genres here. They do not have science fantasy, for example. So I'm going to call this... I mean, you can type in your own. Let's actually type it in. Why not? Enter. Oh, I can do more? Ah, shit. All right, edit details again. I didn't mean to shut that down. Okay, we'll go under fantasy, science fiction, and probably adventure. I guess you'd call it adventure. I think I only have three genres though. Okay, add a project summary. Well, I don't have to do any of that right now, but you can. No, that's not to know your enemy. But I'm doing it's brothers in arms conclusion. I already did to know your enemy. Brothers in arms. I mix it up because I, I split the novel. Add a project summary. Um, I'm always shit with this. Shandar Sunfall. has joined a secret program. Elven Marine. Elven Marine. Shandar Sunfall has joined a secret program to infiltrate his people's enemy, the orcs. He has successfully integrated himself into one of the noble Valorian families who control the enemy empire. This would be desirable, except for two things. First, he has lost contact with his own forces forces and cannot get home. Second, he just might be starting to care about the family he has infiltrated. I could add an excerpt at this point because I do have excerpts for this, but I'm not going to. I usually add that later. I also have playlists. Are you guys interested in seeing any of that? I could I could do that if you guys wanted me to show you that stuff. In the meantime, uh, okay, Aaron is reaching out to Siobhan. Uh, 
Siobhan says she figured out the problem. She has a goal date ending at the end of November, but didn't have the original option for Nano and now cannot shift it. But then she figured it out. Okay. So is interest, is there any interest in something like, uh, you know, where I would find an excerpt for this and, and how I would choose one? Or anything like, uh, you know, tuh, I can see my Discord still on, I should probably, oh, did I go down for a minute? Or did it just take the bot that long to let people know that I was live? It doesn't look like I went down. It took the bot that long, eh? Jesus Christ. Okay. So, I don't know. Um, if there's no interest, I can do that stuff later. <laughs> DM Stretch says, Wow, I have 40,640 booty coins built up. Damn. Yeah, come watch our game on, on uh, Mondays. And then you will run out of those quickly as you make the characters re-roll. It's great. <laughs> and the DM, too. It's fun. I've been considering whether or not to set up another uh, community challenge here, but I'm not sure, like, what would be a good challenge. I mean, I'm, other people are doing, like, okay, stream for, you know, a sport a 24-hour stream. I don't want to overlap anybody else's 24-hour stream, A, Right. And B, I'm going to stream like the whole time anyway. That's another thing. My stream schedule is going to seriously increase in uh, nano. I'm going to show you in a, in a minute. I'd love to, says DM stretch, but I'm usually going to bed as you start playing. That's fair. I mean, it is like 6 p.m. our time, right? So. Booty is flagged on mobile. Well, it's booty as in treasure, as in like the take from pirates. So I don't know what to do about that one. I'm not changing it because I think it's funny. So I don't know. Okay, I will take it by this. You guys have no interest in uh, stuff about playlists or excerpts right now. So I'm just going to ignore that and work on it later. Hello, Black Megan. Welcome. I'm just uh, kind of demonstrating how I do things for starting Nano and officially announcing my Nano project. Now the other thing we can do, and I forget where it is, just I'll click on this again. Come on now, what are you doing? Oh, I am on it. Okay, edit cover. I, okay, they say you are more likely to uh, be successful at Nano if you create a cover, even if you're not going to actually use the cover. And of course, I'm not actually going to use the cover because it's loosely based on art that I have already done. Why are you being a problem? There we go. Okay. Right, but and this is not something I can use commercially, obviously, because I just kind of cobbled it together from various stuff I found on the web, but it inspires me, so I will create it. Also, um, I kind of made this hodgepodge cover later because I was splitting, well, no, actually, hold on. There, it's actually this cover. I love this cover, but I can't use this image. Right, and of course it still contains the old stuff from when it was fan fiction. By the way, I'm looking for an artist who kind of does this style. Like, you know, the, the picture itself there with the kind of, you know, it's obviously an action novel background. If you know anybody who does that, tell them to get in touch with me. I am willing to, like, I'm, I'm actually going to spend some real money on this one. I want these covers to do it right. I've learned that one of the most important things you can do is have a good cover to sell your books. And so I'm going to spend, I'm, I'm willing to spend a little cash on it. Right. Um, I may have to do a Kickstarter, but I'm going to do it. Black Maggie waves at everyone. 
Glorval says, I usually just listen to the music from the cultures of the books I'm currently working on when I write. Absolutely. Sadly, I have to go into lurk mode as I need to get a few other things done. That's okay. That's okay. I'll still be here. Black Maggot says, just letting you know, I might not stream after you, Sable. Not feeling mentally well. Well, that's unfortunate, but you gotta self-care first, right? So if you're not up to it, you're not up to it. And that's really okay, right? Um, Dragon Love Water says, I might know someone. He may be more into photo editing, though. Also, I don't know what to stream, says Black Maggot. Well, we could just stream you working on your writing. Um, that's cool. I'm just happy to hang out with you while you do that. I enjoy those streams. Right? If you're planning on doing nano, you can talk about that. Right? Um, you can talk about working on your world. If you're planning on doing this community challenge, you could talk about that. You know, I don't know. I don't know what you're into. Seems like you're kind of really struggling with focus and inspiration right now. Um, what do you want to be working on right now? If you had your choice and you had no obligations in terms of like what you had to work on, what would you want to work on? Siobhan says, all I do is work on my writing most streams and talk with reviewers. Yep, that's all she does and it's fun. Then I feel like I'm sitting with someone at a write-in. This is something we're not going to be doing much of in Nano. Like I'm, I got some of the information for the uh, um, um, municipal liaisons. These are local people who help to organize NaNoWriMo events. And they're very specific that we are not to do any in-person events this year, regardless of what the rules are in the area where we're at in order to avoid risk of COVID. So everything we are going to do this year will have to be online. Fortunately, I am amply equipped to do that. So it's cool. But one of the things that I like to do is you go to uh, like a gathering of other writers and you all write together. And often people will end up chatting about writing instead, but often you share what you've written or you bounce ideas off each other, or even just sit quietly in each other's company and write. And doing these streams is like that, right? It fills that same need for me. So I'm quite happy to sit and listen to people while they're writing and do some writing myself and chitter chat occasionally back and forth. So, uh, Black Maggot says, I want to work on the rest of my novel, God Noise. I want to finish so badly, right? It's a passion project and I just want to finish it. Otherwise, I just want to continue writing without these horrible, horrible slumps I continuously have. I feel you. I feel you. Sometimes when you're really down, it's hard to write. Even though that's what you want to do more than anything else in the world. And that's often when I do world building stuff because at least then I'm kind of doing stuff around my writing. You know, and I don't take it that seriously. I just kind of, I just kind of do it. Right. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what works for you. Maybe even world building too much because of summer camp. You're kind of burnt out. You don't want to do that either. In which case, it might be a good time to put some playlists together. That's what I tend to do. Um, Siobhan says virtual write-ins this year. Yep, absolutely. That's the plan. Um, Delian says, I couldn't really go to the writing meetups anyway. They're all far away on the mainland. Yep, and Siobhan says, well, Delian, now you can attend the write-ins. Yep, because everyone's in the same boat. And that's okay. Barbarossa says, yay, I think I got my national uniforms for my military, mainly infantry and the wet sleeves. The wet sleeves are his uh, are, um, military mages, which is really kind of cool. All right, so now I've set up my project for Nano, and I am ready to go. Now, other things that are kind of cool that you can do, like stats are things like track how many words you've written per day. Buddies are people that you associate with on NaNoWriMo, and basically you can kind of check their progress as well as your own. That's the purpose of setting that up. Forums are a lively, a lively discussion space, as they say. 
Um, I think they were more active when they were on the old system, but they've recently, as of last year, they did, redid their website. <clears throat> they moved to a new system. But you can find forums for things like LGBTQ, right? And, uh, you know, the science fiction forum and, you know, <clears throat> a place to procrastinate. And then there's forums for writer games and stuff like that, right? I tend to kind of dip my toes into the... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the genre-related ones and the LGBTQ forum, but otherwise I don't spend a lot of time there personally, but hey, if it helps you, that's what they're there for. I do, however, spend a lot of time in my home region, <clears throat> which is the Okanagan Valley. Oh, good. I did make it. They put me on the list. Excellent. So I'm officially a municipal liaison. Awesome. Uh, there's three of us, and we're splitting the work in this area because the valley's pretty big. <coughs> like, um, the, the kind of, I, I represent kind of the north end of it, right? Uh, Princess Adora represents kind of the uh, south of it, and Ammo1967, who is Angelica, she is kind of in the middle. So... We're going to divide the labor this year. So awesome, right? And this is how you kind of, you know, keep track of events that are going on in your local area, right? This is, you know, kind of an overview of what's happening, right? And a place to chat with other people in the community. Yeah. And they have all these resources. They also have a Twitter account where you can get information and another Twitter account where they do constant writing sprints all day, every day. It's pretty amazing, right? Um, then that, that's called nano word sprints. If you're looking for that one, otherwise it's NaNoWriMo for the main account and they have a Facebook group and they have a YouTube channel where they stream live writing events virtual write-ins, and all kinds of other methods of support. I I suggest you check out one of their virtual writing streams at least once, if you're going to do it, just so you get a feel of how they do things, what their culture's like, and all that kind of stuff. All right. <laughs> Natalia says, I need to visit my pillow. I don't blame you. It's very late where you are. You have a good sleep, and thank you for joining me. Siobhan says, I haven't really touched the forums. Yep. Black says, not to toot my own horn, but I am the reason something huge happened in the nano forums. Are you? Okay, I don't know anything about that. I don't know if you care to share. I'm curious. Yeah, Delian says, we have two regions in Estonia, north and south. I have no idea where I'm technically supposed to belong since I'm in the middle, off to the west. <laughs> I don't know. I think... There's a function where you can find a region. Just a second. I'll go back there and I'll see if I can help you find it. It really is kind of fun to collect, uh, to connect with your local community of, you know, writing nerds like you. So, you know, I recommend you do it even if you don't attend a write-in. Oh, I hear dingy things. Why do I hear dingy things? Oh, we have a new follow. Awesome. Thank you, Carpsy. Welcome. Right, so, yes, we're talking about NaNoWriMo, if you haven't been listening. I don't know if you've been lurking in the stream or not, but find a region. Join a region for more support. It's under community. This is taking a while. I'm dropping a lot of frames. I hope that this works out. Okay. Okay. Am I still dropping a lot of frames here? Let's see. Nope, it settled out. Okay, good. So this is like... People. We're like somewhere down here is where our local community is. <laughs> it's all kind of meshed together. But search region names. Estonia.
Holy crap, it's slow. Okay. Well, obviously, it's not going to be there. There we go. Estonia. So, north is centered here, and south is centered there. So, the question is, which one are you closer to, Dylan? Or hell, maybe join them both. For a while, I was part of the... Um, uh, lower mainland and um, Okanagan groups because you know I associated with both people so there's no reason why you can't do both if you want all right Uh, Black Maggot says, other than that, I've been avoiding said forums because of what had happened. Fair enough. If, you know, big things, often I avoid forums too. Hello, Dinosaur Bob. Welcome. Made you pretty mad. Says, or made, made me pretty mad, Black Maggot says. Yikes. Bob says, okay, what did you do? Delian says, in 2018, Janet's nano streams helped me a lot with the sprints. Well, that's what we're going to be here for. There are all kinds of ASC writers who are going to do it. And this calendar is going to show you how to find those events. Right? If, if it's involved in a NaNoWriMo event, it's here. Let me show you, actually. I was going to talk about my expanded schedule in November. As you can see, I went a little insane. So basically, there will be a stream on this channel every day in November. If Aaron is not streaming, I am. Right, so I'm going to do a launch of uh, Nano Begins. This is in uh, UTC. So uh, for me, that'll be midnight my time here. Right, but this is all the UTC. Right, and I'm going to write for two hours at the launch of Nano. And then I'm doing a well 6 p.m right 6 p.m uh utc which is like 11 o'clock in the morning my time i'll be writing for a bit even on monday right so there'll be two streams on monday because our game stream will still happen Right? Tuesday I won't be on because that's Aaron's day. Wednesday, of course, I'll still be here with Diane Wrights as usual. Uh, Thursday I'm going to be doing... Where am I here? 10 p.m. Uh, in uh, UTC. Another Nano Extra. The Nano Extras are basically going to be right in with sprints. Right? And we'll be talking about topics more on the typical day right so yeah and of course on uh sundays i'm doing sables world forge which will probably also <laughs> end up being writing at that time so i probably should put that on the event calendar too but yeah so yeah you can check all this out here for the time in utc this is the function i'll put that link in the chat okay so this is how you find all the Anvilite uh, streamer NaNoWriMo events. So we're going to be here to hang out. And of course you can pick your time zone and show it whenever you want. So notice that I've got a panic stream for people in the Pacific time zone. <laughs> on uh, That's my De uh, December 30th, but uh, or uh, November 30th, but it's December 1st for UTC. So yeah. Okay. Second Hand Samurai says, Ah, so we have quite a few uh, municipal liaisons of World Anvil. With the in-person ban, how are they handling some of the international non-local focus? Are they allowing virtual communities this year? Um, why am I looking at this? Okay, just a second. Basically, yes. Right? Um... We'll go here. <coughs> um, basically, 
Um, okay, you, you can still join your local community and whatnot. Oh, I hear a dingy thing. Time pool rated. Hello, time pool. Good to see you. We're talking about plans for NaNoWriMo this year and streams during that time. For some reason, I ran a virus scan. I don't know why. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Um... I probably just need to reformat the whole goddamn computer, so we'll stop doing that. Um, what was I talking about? Communities. Um, they're still organizing the communities according to region, but everything is supposed to be online, right? Um, as a uh, municipal liaison, I was required to virtually sign a form saying I would hold no in-person events. Right? So everything is going to be online. So I imagine make whatever communities you want, you know, um, join up with writer buddies, right? Um, you know, uh, connect your own Facebook groups, your Discord communities. Um, I do nano events in my Discord every year as well. You guys are welcome to join that. Moobot probably told you how to do that already, but I will tell you again. If you care to join me, I have a nano and writing channel. And I will run uh, virtual sprints there from time to time. And you guys are all quite welcome. Right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're encouraging us to use things like Facebook, Twitch, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter. Um, they have uh, sprint tools on the website that you can get people to come to and use. Right? Uh, it's all supposed to be online focused this year. So come be part of my community, guys. It'll be fun. It'll be great. Uh, and I'm I'm kind of with Siobhan there. This is our local community. Black Maggot said, if anyone paid attention, do you remember the whole uh, BIPOC thing, uh, BIPOC, that happened in which an entire area of the forums was made for us them? Well, I started that on the nano group when people kept saying time and time again, how to write people of color. Ugh. Not to mention the rules of the moderators change. I have proof for it if anyone wants to see sometime. It was really, really big on the Facebook group. I remember this discussion, actually, and I try not to pay attention to politics and things like that. So I do remember that discussion. Uh, yeah. And... I'm glad that a space was created, right? Because, you know, I'm glad that there is a, an LGBTQ space for the same reason. People get really tired of, well, I get really tired of what straight people sometimes have to say about writing about us rainbow people. It's annoying, right? So good for you. I'm glad you started that and I'm glad that got done. And I'm sorry if it was a big drama, but now the space exists, so you win, and that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, I read a, a thing, right, which is something that I found very interesting, and it was, uh, do not describe, if you're a white writer, do not describe people of color with food. And I've done that, right? So it's interesting. I now try to, I, I didn't realize it was offensive and, or that some people found it offensive. Not everybody does, but some people do, right? And I try not to use that now. I try to, um, you know, I, I try to find things in, in nature to describe particular shades. And that's the other thing, right? People of color do not all come in one shade. Right. And also you shouldn't focus on that as a thing. It should be like if you're describing hair color. Right. But I think it would be a nice thing. And it's not a convention that people typically use. But I think it would be nice if we didn't assume white was the default because people do that. Right. Um, brown hair and blue eyes. OK. So what color is her skin? You know. Mine is kind of a parchment color, I would say, because I have kind of a golden undertone, 
which comes from my Ashkenazi ancestry. And I like it, by the way. I like that golden over undertone. I'm very, uh, I've always been very fond of it. So I'm, you know, my, my mom, you know, she's very, uh, very Scottish, right? In, in her ancestry. And she turns like red if she gets in the sun. I turn red once and then the gold starts coming out and I like it. So, um, you know, but not every white shade is the same either, right? You know? We often take the time to describe, say, a redhead skin color. You know, we say she had skin like milk or cream or something like that, or a peaches and cream complexion, right? But we don't talk about, you know, in between shades at all. It's interesting. So. The regional thing got updated. I don't like the new one, says Author Goddess. I agree with you. I don't like it as much either, either, because it's more like an extended Twitter conversation instead of a forum, which is why I'm trying to encourage all my local writers to come to my Discord, because I like Discord better. I hear you. Black Maggot says, I'm both angry and glad it happened, still primarily fucking mad. It never should have had to happen. I agree with you 100%. It never should have, right? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, right, people don't think sometimes, you know, they don't, they don't think sometimes. So, uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. I'm sorry it happened too. Siobhan says, I'm running sprints for Nano. Awesome. Delian says, I'll be on the calendar soon as well in September with Nano Prep. Excellent, Delian. I cannot wait to check out your Nano streams. There's some talk about trying to get full, like, 24-hour Nano coverage. That would be awesome, like, from the, from the streamer core. I would love that. I, I don't know if that's possible or even desirable, but I sure would really enjoy being able to tune in at any time of day and find people doing writing. That would be great. You know, even if it's just for November, that would be freaking awesome. Um, so Saturdays would be virtual write-ins. Yeah. Um, every, every time I'm streaming, it's going to be virtual write-in. So Dazzlecat says, sorry, you had to straighten people out. I don't know what BIPOC is. Uh, um, I forget what the BI stands for, but it's like, um, um, like people of color with, uh, biracial ancestry. So, yeah. Uh, Black Maggot says, if you want to, Sable, uh, read them on your own time. I can post the Facebook group's links. It did cause a lot of drama. Um, only if you want, otherwise I shall go quiet. I'm not currently on Facebook. I had a security breach issue, and now they want me to send them a copy of my driver's license. And I'm kind of stubbornly... I am deciding whether or not the benefit I get out of Facebook is worth them uh, clawing more of my personal information out of me. Like, what makes them think I'm going to send them my fucking driver's license when there was a security breach issue so that some asshole can try to hack my account again and get my driver's license information? Do I really want to do that? I, I'm not sure I do. So I haven't, I haven't decided whether I'm going back on Facebook or not. On the other hand, there's a lot of things that I have linked to my Facebook, so I'm like... <clears throat> Plus, it's the best place to advertise for my Kickstarters. So, I don't know. DM Stretch says, Disable, it should have a setting option to turn that auto scan off. What antivirus do you use? This is just Windows Defender. I have looked it up. All right, I tried to shut it off, and I cannot figure out how in the fuck to do it. I think I have to just completely reinstall Windows and pick a different setting. Right. I, you know, Aaron couldn't figure out how to do it. If you can figure out how to do it, you got a link somewhere. Windows help did not help. Let me know. Yeah. Uh, Dazzlecat says, uh, don't worry, Black Maggot. We can all just be friend writers. Well, that's, a uh, that in and of itself can be problematic with taking that attitude, right? Oh, I don't, see, it, that's kind of the, I don't see color, I don't see race thing. If you don't, it's because you are, you have the luxury of not, 
right? Because people of color do not have the luxury of not seeing it because it affects everything they do and every way in which they interact with society. Whether their friends see it or not, like their, their white friends, their lives are different because people have ideas and these are there are systemic biases there are uh personal subconscious biases right um and yeah it's you know it's it's like again with people who say i don't care about gender well if you've been in a marginalized gender you care about gender if you don't care about gender it's because you're in a privileged position where you never had to care about gender right I care about gender. I've been marginalized due to my gender a lot, right? So, yeah, it's a thing. Ideally, yeah, we should yeah. live in a world where none of this should matter, but because we do, it has to matter for everyone. We have to think about it, you know? Complicated. You should also be able to pause the scan, says DM Stretch. Yep, if it ever popped up a window or an indicator of any kind, including an icon in my start menu telling me that it was working, I would. But it doesn't. So it just runs it in the background, doesn't bother to give me any notification at all. Windows is the only virus you willingly install. Some conversation back and forth here about the situation. You know what, actually, uh, Megan, I'm really glad you brought it up because it's important to know that things like this go on, right? If we don't know that things like this go on, we can't put a stop to it. We can't fix the problem, right? We need to be aware that these things happen so that we can make it a better place, right? Writer Greg is back from the kitty carpool. Welcome. Good to see you. We just finished talking a bunch of stuff about NaNoWriMo. I think we're just about at the end of the discussion about how you get involved, suggestions for ways to improve it. Um, we even touched on drama that happened within uh, NaNoWriMo's forums, right? There's, uh, you know, because nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect, right? But, uh, yeah. You know, um, we talked about kind of the streaming schedule plan for the next month that, you know, and, and into NaNoWriMo that I'm going to do in, you know, with kind of a nano focus. And we're going to focus on the, the prep aspects that the nano prep information focuses on. So next week, we'll start by talking about stories, story ideas, where they come from, how to develop them. Right. And yeah, so on. Nice to be back at the desk, says Greg which is cool. I hate driving in rush hour traffic. Oh my God. So do I, I, I can, <sighs> yeah, that can be some of the most stressful. I, uh, yeah, I absolutely, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. DM stretch says, I personally describe my color as ghost. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Right. Uh, Siobhan says, who does Greg, uh, RH is more of a crawl for three hour traffic. Fair enough. Daz says, I get dark freckles on a light tan after I burn. Yeah, I got my share of freckles here. You should see. Can you see all the freckles on my upper arm here? Look at that, eh? That's all freckles. <laughs> got enough of my mom in me for that. Yeah. Th that's not like a skin rash. That's freckles. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, Writer Greg says, my schedule is already on the ASC calendar. Five hours a day, six days a week. Awesome. I'm doing, I think it's five out of the seven days because I'm not streaming on the days that Aaron is. Right? And um, I'm doing at least three hour stretches every one of those days, I think. So you're doing a lot more than I am, but I'm putting in my presence. I'll be here. Um, we might have like, I think it's something like 29 straight hours of writing streams next week. If everybody who's on the schedule streams 
it's going to be amazing. So, yeah, Dragon Love Water says, no streams for me until I get better internet for my PC. I feel that pain. Ah! BIPOC stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. Okay, that's interesting. I did not know, actually. I thought it represented biracial people. How do I know? But it's a more inclusive term, like LGBTQAI+, right? Okay. Legit. Thank you for educating me. Fun but no pressure, says Secondhand Samurai. Damn, are you guys going to shame me into nano, says Dinosaur Bob? No, I'm going to try to encourage you. I'm going to try to encourage you to do it. If you've always wanted to get, you know, a novel done or, you know, write that game book or whatever it is, Nano can be a very good way to do it. I would never have published a thing without doing NaNoWriMo. And there's the evidence of its success right there, guys. That Those are all, I, I did all those. So, um... It, can, it it I I love it, and I like to encourage people to do it because it's fun, because it's fun, right? So no, I'm not going to shame you into it. If you don't want to do it, hey, that's cool. Don't do anything that's going to discourage you from writing. But if it's going to encourage you, if you like the idea of taking what's normally a solitary activity and doing it with friends who will encourage you and drive you on, it's awesome. It's like the community challenges at World Anvil. It's great. You know, it's it's a lot like World Ember in terms of the the frenzy and the exchange of information and the community support and, you know, the the competition element, too, if you want to participate in that. You don't have to, but you can. Right. You can do word wars with people and see who gets the most words. Oh, and that reminds me, if you guys want to, we're planning a thing. We're planning a thing for Nano. It's going to be a competition of a sort, but it's all in good fun. And it's and by we, I mean a bunch of us uh, Anvilite writers. Um, among them include Siobhan, right? Uh, Coffee Quills, uh, Danny Adventures, um, uh, Chrysalia, um, I don't know if writer Greg's actively participating in this part, but he's definitely, you know, involved in nano and doing his own nano stuff and, you know, checking that out. Right. I don't remember if Maggot said that he was involved or not, but, uh, um, Darth Nicholas and, you know, a bunch of us. Right. And it's going to be kind of an ongoing competition thing that is all in good fun. Right. And, I'll, I'll say this much about it. I'm not going to give the whole details, but it's going to be kind of in the spirit of the Nano House Cup for those of you who have done that event, because I'm not doing that event this year because I cannot support JK Rowling in anything that she is currently doing or give her any press, I feel, because of her particular stance on trans people. And so I had to create something else for myself that I could do that I could feel good about participating in. So that is what we are doing. And more details will be revealed closer to the time. Probably we'll start talking about at the beginning of October, I would say. So. I mean, you got Delian. Yes, we did. Second Hand Samurai says, I had a Facebook block where they asked for my passport and a Facebook for me. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, I don't want you to have that fucking information. You, you don't need that information from me. It's not your goddamn business. So. But I have a work Facebook login. Yeah, fair enough. Everybody hates Facebook. Yep. Siobhan definitely cares about gender. Yep. D 
DM Stretch says, I recommend getting the free a AVG antivirus far better. I had it for a while and then it failed to recognize something and I had to re uh, redo my whole computer and lost a whole bunch of information when I rebooted or re uh, reformatted. So uh, yeah, everyone's always trying to tell you which one is the, the best that's secure and it changes from year to year. I like AVG. I thought it was much easier to deal with. I agree with you. We'll look and see if the information has changed as to which one is the best. I had a vast for a while because that was the best at the time. Yeah. Okay, arguments about which one is the best. What we generally do is every six months we look up and see which one is currently being recommended as the, you know, best deal. And the problem is they change with uh, antiviruses because people develop hacks and ways around different systems, right? See, I thanks, Bob. I we we research this actually and find out which one is currently, you know, among the best options. So Rowan has arrived. Hi, Rowan. Nice to see you. Uh, Bob said there was just some discussion about which one is the best. Bo uh, Dinosaur Bob said he's kind of in the business, and Windows Defender is currently in the top three. So. Rowan is doing laundry and waiting. <laughs> Greg says, I miscounted my hours. I can't math some days what the calendar says it is. Fair enough. Yes, an RPG Bob, you will have all the encouragement from those of us who are doing nano, says Siobhan. Black Maggot says, agreed, Sable. I've been writing all my life, and it was thanks to nano in 2017, my first one in which I actually finished a novel for the first time ever. Not even a novel, just an original story. Absolutely. Oh, Bob wants to be shamed into it. You should do it! You should do it. Because if you don't, then you're going to be left behind. Because we're all going to be doing it. And you're going to be the one all by yourself in the corner with no friends. Because... <laughs> well, we're doing that a bit, I think. <laughs> you should do it. It's fun. Give it a try. If you don't succeed, so what? Right? If you do succeed... What an accomplishment to be proud of. And it really is. It really is an accomplishment to be proud of. And you'll have all of us who will all know about it and congratulate you. Really, it's awesome. With the nano thing, there was a competition. It's confused, says Black Megan. <laughs> Author Goddess walks behind Dinosaur Bob, ringing a bell and yelling, Shame! <laughs> Black Megan missed Aaron's joke, who said, remember, you are all individuals. The, then the proper response is, yes, we are all individuals. Except for someone going, I'm not. This is Monty Python, of course. Yeah, I already got Dillian in 2018. Nano is how he got started with the World Anvil community. Me too. Uh, but last year, not this year. Same thing. Bought myself a... Uh, I've said it a few times now, but I, I bought myself a master's membership because I achieved a new personal record for finishing uh, Nano early. And I was like, I deserve a present. Okay. ASC NaNoWriMo friendly competition. Please more info. Yes. Secret, secret stuff. The best uh, antivirus uh, is and has been for a while uh, Kaspersky. Okay, cool. I did not know. I will check that out. Kit is here and checking in before dinner. Hello and welcome. Siobhan says, you're going to be sitting on your own porch drinking your coffee in silence as the streams have all gone quiet. 
<laughs> Everybody's like shaming Dinosaur Bob now. Aaron starts threatening mob finger breaking. Get your fingers warmed up or you may break them when trying nano or someone might break them for you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Dragon Love Water says join us. Now that's what I wanted to hear, says Bob. Okay. Rowan says, we shall see if we have the boys' winter firewood done before then. Fair enough. Fair enough. Gotta get the winter firewood done. But Gareth wants to do nano too. And I know he does. Because he's done the Young Writers program. So I know he wants to do nano. And he can do it with us. And it'll be fun. Okay. And you can do it too. And it'll be fun. And that's the other thing. Right? Rowan cannot spell to save her life. She will be the first person to admit it. We're old friends. I know this. And... Who cares? You can edit it later. That's a spell check is for. Do it later. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, Dragon Love Water is now threatening to, or now promising to bribe Bob if he participates. I'll give you my potato salad recipe and mocktail formula. I'll take that too. Okay, no. All right, Rowan says if we if ten split cords are done by then, I will give it a go. Awesome. We need to buddy up, says Author Goddess. I'd love to collaborate during Nano. No idea how, but yeah. And then Rowan says, exactly, that is what spell check is for. Yep, absolutely. Don't worry about any of that shit. Okay. We're at three o'clock, almost. It's three minutes to three. <laughs> make you do sit-ups and push-ups okay i will do that and then we're gonna go for a break um five minutes or so right and then when i get back i'll start talking about what i'm doing with timelines we're gonna change the topic and i'm gonna show you what i'm doing there and we're gonna do some focused writing period stuff um but Aegon says before i go i thought about nano but doing just rpg stuff and not writing a novel have no idea how I would even do that. Well, okay, you want to talk to Aaron because that is what he did last year. And he succeeded. He wrote his 50,000 words. I'll have you know. That's why we got him a membership too for World Anvil. Same thing. Congratulations, you did it. Here's your present, right? And then from there, we both jumped right into World Ember and we both succeeded at that too. So he can help you. He knows all about it. And there's no reason why you can't. As a matter of fact, when you're doing tables of stats, that takes up a lot of space of writing, actually. That's a big word count. You'd be amazed at how quickly that eats up word count. Aaron will tell you all about it. And now he is rewriting it. Yes. Okay, do my, my push-ups or sit-ups. I think I'll do push-ups. I think my arms need to work out. And actually, I really do appreciate when you guys use the exercise options because, you know what, you gotta move, you gotta stretch, it's good for you. Okay, you get to see my messy floor with the cat uh, disaster all over it. No, you don't get to see my messy floor, apparently. Alright, just a second, how's that? There we go. Yeah, okay, you can see. It's important you see, because otherwise no evidence I did it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. I gotta screw around with my camera again. Okay. Let's see if that's the right one. Whew. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, good. How the heck does one finish a novel every year? I don't finish a novel every year. You kidding? I do 50,000 words every year. <laughs> Is the novel finished? Mm. <laughs> Not a hope in hell. Ah, uh, come on now. <laughs> oh. 
Well, that was a good uh, angle, wasn't it? I should stop fucking with it. Problem is, you're seeing too much of my door. Okay, there we go. Alright. Um, Dazzlecat says if my September, if my September prep is successful, I will nano. That's awesome. <coughs> you know what? Do it anyway. Seriously. Siobhan says, uh, Sable, I am jealous. I forgot just how long your hair is. <laughs> Black Megan says he can't do that because he's too fat. No, you're not. Yes, you can. You can do it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Besides, I've seen you. I know what you look like now. You're not fat. Um, Maybe larger than me, but not fat at all because people come in different sizes um dm starts says i do push-ups better than he does thank you i do actually do regular exercise so um well okay not lately it's getting harder with uh covid i gotta tell you okay guys i'm sorry i gotta take the break right because I really have to pee now. <laughs> so I'll be back in a minute. And when I do, we'll catch up on the
And we're back. All right. I'm not going to read everything in the chat. Where it's getting ahead, but I'll touch on a few things. Um, the camera will survive. It's been off sync before. It's just this little thing. It's really good quality, which I really like. Um, the reason why this isn't the best quality stream is because of my hardware, like on the computer and a video card, not because of the camera, right? But the it's like this little tiny thing that you brace against your monitor with a lever in the back. And um, my monitor is this, you know, it's a flat monitor, right? So it's hard to do, but it'll work. <clears throat> Okay, so Black Maggot said, uh, you know, how does how do people write like where where was it that he said that? He said uh, How the heck does one finish a novel every year? Um, then how the heck does one do that many words in one month? Fifty K words every year. The answer is sixteen hundred and sixty seven words per day, which is about the length of an English essay that you used to do in high school, right? And if you do that every day, no matter what, period, you will do this, right? Um, Stephen King wrote in his book on writing that what he does is he sits down in front of his computer and he does 2,000 words a day. And sometimes that takes him an hour because he's on a roll. And sometimes it takes him all day. And he doesn't do anything else until that is done. Uh, most of us can't do that in real life. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of poor people in particular are like, yeah, well, fuck you. You don't have any other job. Right. True. Right. A lot of uh, women are like, yeah, well, fuck you. Who's doing the laundry? Also true. Right. But you can do it for one month. You can do that for one month. The laundry will wait. The dishes will wait, right? They'll they'll get done eventually. They'll still be there, right? So um, one of the things you might want to start doing now, if you live with other people and there's a certain um, chore schedule that's expected, for example, is to let people know that you are joining this competition. You are going to do this and it is very important to you. And therefore, the housework may fall by the wayside a bit. You promise you will do it as soon as you have time, but you may not have time on one particular day. You hope they will understand. Right? And um, basically, um, this is more difficult when you are not of the age of majority. But if you are of the age of majority, and even if you live at home, this is a reasonable expectation right? It is reasonable for you to go, you know what, I'm sorry, I, you know, I realize it's eight o'clock at night, and but and the dishes haven't been done yet. But I'm only at 1200 words, and I need 1667 today. So I really have to get this done. I'm very sorry, it's gonna have to wait. Treat it. If you want to, if you want writing to, to be successful, and you want to be a pro writer, treat it like a job, right? You're not going to interrupt your job to take the garbage out unless it's part of your job right you're not going to go home and take the fucking garbage out when you're at work right you're not going to do that you're not going to let your friends ask you to go for coffee with them when you're in the middle of stacking shelves at walmart you're not going to do that right that would be absolutely unacceptable treat your writing like that treat it like that you know, tell your friends, hey guys, I may not see a lot of you the next month here. It's not personal. It's that I'm doing this competition. It's very important to me. I'm taking it seriously and it's going to take up a lot of my time. I'll see you in December. You know, you can do that. And it's really okay to want that for yourself. You're allowed to have that. Um... Aaron started doing nano because if he didn't, he didn't see a lot of me, <laughs> right? Um, in November, right? Jamie hates it, but they both recognize that it's really important to me. So they support me in doing it. 
because I'm a slow writer and often it takes me all fucking day to get that 1667 words. Delian says, I wish people used the push-up reward on my streams more often, or award. I need to exercise my noodle arms as well. Okay, duly noted. Siobhan is not a toothpick. Author Goddess says, I can do a UF from outline to publication ready in three months. Yes, she can. She's amazing. I wish I could write as fast as she can. And it's it's good. You know, it's not going to win the, uh, you know, Pulitzer Prize for literature, right? But neither is mine. So it's good readable work. It's, it, you know, she's a good writer. Yes, cool. All right. So Black Meg, it's in for the streaming. Excellent. And Daz says, we are all getting that COVID cushioning. Yes. I might steal that too, by the way. And now people are making a mess of the chat. That's awesome. Siobhan, why the hell are you not coming over for dinner if you're that short of food? You're ridiculous. Okay, uh, Author Goddess says, I taught my son to cook. He makes supper every night. That is awesome. Logitech camera? Yes. Yes, it is, actually. How did you know? <laughs> Black Maggot says, I see. I always tr try to do 5K words a day. It's exhausting. Of course it's exhausting. 5K words a day? Are you insane? That's amazing. If you can do it, that's amazing. So what are you worried about? If you can do 1,600, if you try to do 5K words a day, 1,667 words a day is a cakewalk for you, right? You got this. Because you go back later to edit. That's right. Aegon says, unless I'm on a roll, there's no way I can do that. Too, uh, too much stuff to do with work, RPG prep, etc. Um, but you can try, right? And if you make the, the time, and we're going to go over some of that, ways to, to prepare for the time over the next, like, couple of weeks. Like, okay, here's one thing you can do, right? Um... Cooking dinner takes a long time. So make up a bunch of shit over the next couple of months that is stuff that you can separate into portions, take out of the freezer and thaw, right? Um, you know, casseroles and uh, spaghetti sauce and like, you know, soups and stews. It's, you know, it's November in the Northern Hemisphere. It's a good time of year to eat that stuff anyway, right? Separate it into portions, freeze it, put it, you know, Take it out of your freezer and, and nuke it when you want to eat it. That saves you a lot of time, right? Um, you know, just find ways to minimize the daily tasks that you have to do that are actually time consuming. And then there's another thing you can do, and World Anvil can help. You can get your phone, and you can put your stuff on manuscripts, and you can take this with you wherever you go anywhere. So when you're standing in the supermarket waiting for your groceries to be processed, you could be writing, right? When you're sitting in your car waiting to pick up your kids from school, you can be writing, you know? When you're at the doctor's office waiting to get into your appointment, you could be writing. You would be amazed at how much time you can get just doing that. It's freaking awesome. If you, if you don't want to use manuscripts, you know, you can have a notepad and pen, and you can type it in later. It actually takes less time to type it in than it does to come up with it in the first place. It's amazing. You really can. You can. You can do this. Um, warn them, says Siobhan. Yeah, warn people. Black Maggot says, I think my mom's getting sick of my shit. I have such horrible ups and downs with my writing. I hear you. But, you know... I think you can lay it out to her in terms of, I'm taking this really seriously. 
I'm going to make sure I get 1,667 words a day done. And th see, I make this compromise with my family sometimes too, right? Because they're, they, you know, they, they don't want to not see me all month, right? So I get my 1,667 words a day done, right? And then they're done. Um, if I'm on a roll and I have the time, I'll go longer than that. And, you know, but generally when I've reached that 1,667 words, that's it. I'm done for the day. I put it down. You know, if I'm, if I'm up on my word count, right, then I, it's just pacing myself, right? And that's another strategy you can use. You can pace yourself uh, or you can front load. That's another strategy people do. They write like insane mad bastards for the first week and try to get well ahead of the word count so that when the inevitable day happens where you don't get any writing done at all, which happens, right? Um, or you get like a hundred words, you know, then that's okay. Cause you've got padding and you can, you can borrow from that cause you've already built ahead, right? Yeah. The dishes will wait. Just worry when they go green and furry says DM stretch. Yeah, pretty much when they start to smell, that's when it's time to do the dishes. <laughs> Black Maggot says, one second I'm happy and on a roll, the next second I'm as depressed as fuck. Yeah. I'll see you sometime maybe is what I say to my mom every day. Um, I don't know a writer in the world that isn't moody and often it has to do with how well the writing is doing. Uh, there's a, a video, I forget what the exact title is, but it's, it's something like Writers Are Crazy or the 10 ways in which writers are crazy by Jenna Marassi. Go watch that video. Laugh a while. I did. Writer Greg says, I have no social life before Twitch, ASC, World Anvil. I have more friends now than I did before the start of the year. Me too. Most of my friends are my gaming buddies, except for you guys. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm an introvert. I spend a lot of time writing. You know, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting enough social contact. It's okay. So, yeah. Black Megan says, I'm a hobby writer, of course. Not at all professional, but I write every day, practically all day, if possible. But you can be. You can be. And how you get to be a professional writer is you, you know, you treat it like it's a job. You take it seriously. And then you publish something. And now you're a professional writer. If somebody paid you for your work, you're pro. You know, um, different professional organizations have different standards for getting into them. For example, uh, CIFWA, the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, require that you sell three short stories at pro rate or a traditionally published novel, right, for which you have received, I think it's a thousand dollar advance, right? So, you know, but that doesn't mean you're not a pro. If somebody paid you, you're professional. So. I agree completely, Black Megan. I'm so thankful for World Anvil and ASC, too. You guys are awesome. Siobhan says, um, I was writing during gaming sessions without losing the game. Sometimes, and sometimes you were horribly distracted. But that's okay, because it's nano, and we understand. Um, Aegon says, yeah, not doing this as a serious writer. Just want my own world to RPG in. If I was a way better writer I may be able to do that with my free time but no way I could meet this goal right now why not enter it anyway and see how far you get I get you, I bet you get farther than you think you would I didn't succeed every year the second year I did it I did not get 50,000 words to be fair um, that was when my first uh, published nonfiction book had its deadline and uh, to be to finish the edits so that was a bigger priority but I, you know, again, it's like I had a real job and I had a life and I didn't get it done because I had a real job and a life. But you know what? I got something like 30,000 more words than I had when I started. And that was awesome because that was the start of this novel that I'll be finishing now. So. Yes, Dinosaur Bob signed up under Dinosaur Bob. That's great. You guys can all find me if you want to buddy me on, on uh, NaNoWriMo as Sable Aradia, of course. Right? I think it's all one word. So. And great. I will send you a buddy request. That's cool. 
Um, actually, no, wait, you send me a buddy request. It's probably easier because it'll take a, uh, like 24 hours or so for your name to show up in a buddy search. So buddy me and we can be writer buddies and I'll encourage you and help you out. It'll be fun. Dragon Love Water has to go. Thank you for joining me. It was lots of fun. I'm glad you were here. 5k words a day has you completing nano in 10 days. Siobhan points out. Mm -hmm. If you can do that 5k words, black maggot, you'll be done in 10 days. There are people who do that. Um, one of our local MLs, Princess is uh, Adora there, who you saw when I was looking through my stuff. She's like that. She's insane. She does something like 200,000 words every nano or 100,000 words every nano. She's a lunatic. I admire her immensely. She writes epic fantasy. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Black Maggot says, no, I can't do it. It's overwhelming. I'll try to do my daily goal this time instead of 5k words a day for nano. Awesome. You just have to keep up on that 1667. That's all you have to do. 50,000 words of game prep, says Dragon Love Water. Yep, you can do that. Author Goddess says, anything you do manage to write is stuff you haven't written before. Exactly. That's the big philosophy with Nano. It's just, we're going to make this a goal. We're going to try. Because then we have stuff we didn't have. Ha! See, there you go. DM Stretch says, hmm, I keep saying I don't know if I can do Nano, but in my stream today, I did 552 words in two 15-minute sprints. Awesome. Writing sprints can be very helpful if you take them seriously, and I get a lot done when I'm doing writing sprints, so I do, tend to do a lot of the virtual write-ins and events like that. So, hell yeah. Um, ah... Okay, Aegon says, nothing I can do to make much time. Wife does all the cooking, and I work almost 12 hours a day because of my IT skills. 12 hours a day is a long stretch of work. And some of us have real jobs that take up a lot of our time. And that's fair. That's fair. Um, so finding the cracks, that's where, you, that's where you're likely to be able to do better little things like definitely put your work on manuscripts google docs or you know a uh, word for mobile or something right <clears throat> and then do writing in the car when you're waiting for people you'll get more done doing that than you think i wrote literally half of my first or no no um more than a third but less than half of my first novel on my blackberry while i was waiting in doctor's offices for appointments i'm not even kidding my, because that was not long after my hubby was out of the hospital and when Aaron was out after his accident and we had a lot of doctor's appointments and he spent time in surgery and then there was, you know, massage therapy and, you know, a lot of other therapy and I spent a lot of time sitting in an office waiting. So I wrote on my Blackberry, which I miss, but yeah. Sprints are great for hitting word counts, even if it's all garbage. Yep. Doesn't have to be great. If you don't like it, you don't think you're going to use it, just put it at the bottom of the document, count it towards your total, worry about it later. Right. Uh, 1,700 words a day is an easier goal that will still get to you to 50k in 30 days, points out Dazzle Cat. Yep. On a break at work, you can be writing, says Siobhan. I used to write regularly during my lunch hour. Absolutely. Esong is here. Hello, we are talking about NaNoWriMo today. Black Maggot says, I'll try the 1.7k goal. Excellent. Congratulations. We can do this. Esong finished her, her second day of hybrid and teach classing, or in class teaching, all in all a good day. Glad to hear it. That was uh, quite the drama setting it up, so I'm glad that it's working now. That's great. Post the link for Jennifer Marassi. All right, I'll try to find it. Just a second here. We'll search. What are you doing? My keyboard is being an idiot today. You know, I love this keyboard, except that sometimes these batteries come loose for no reason. Oh, I'm running low on battery. Okay, writers. 
are crazy Jenna Marasi. That's not working. Videos. Nine Weird Habits of Writers. This is the one you want. There. This is hilarious. All right. The downside of jumping in late is not being able to tell how far Sable is behind on chat, says Esong. Now you know. Kit is back from scarfing down pizza. Excellent. Esong says, I'm also grateful for all you wonderful people. Me too. Uh, Dazzlecat says to Black Maggot, find another thing you like to do that's not writing. It'll uh, use this as a cooldown to prevent burnout. Yep. Good idea. You, you need to take a break sometimes and let your brain simmer. Right? You're not going to get anything done if you don't know where you're going. And, and writing often happens a lot of it in the churning subconscious of your mind. So... E song says, for some people, writing is a career, and for others, it's a hobby. Do the thing that will fuel your soul the most. She's right. No search results for Sable Aradia? All right. Just a minute. All right, you kind of need to see what I'm doing, don't you? All right, try it with a space. Sable space Aradia. And make sure to capitalize both the S and the A because I think their search function is anal about that. Um, Daz says, when you're feeling down on your writing, do that other thing. Yeah. Author Goddess says, Nano is the ultimate participation trophy situation. Any effort is worth applause. 100% correct. Song says, I'm not doing nano either. Too many other commitments during this first year with hybrid teaching. I will celebrate and share all of you, though. That's wonderful, hon. And if you're deciding you're not doing nano, but you still want to work on writing, you can still tune into the streams and you'll miss nothing, right? Like, um, the, um, we're still going to, all the stuff that we're going to deal with in terms of nano prep is stuff that's important for writing in general. So it still will help you to turn, tune into those streams. Obviously, sprints are helpful, right? So, you know, we can write together and enjoy each other's company if you want to do some world building or writing or whatever, whether or not you actually decide to do nano and count it. And that's fine. DM Stretch says, hmm, if I do a three hour sprint stream every day and focus just on writing and don't chat so much, then maybe I could do it. It's just thinking of things to write. We'll help you with that. We can help you with that. Right. Um, that's part of what we're going to go over is prepping and making sure you have kind of a, a plan. Right. For Nano. Writer Greg says, I will not be streaming tonight. I'm attending my local writing group Zoom meeting. Please support ASC streamers. Thank you very much for letting us know, Greg. I'm disappointed you won't be streaming tonight, but that's OK. Everybody needs a break sometime. And, you know, you got to hang out with your local writer group, too. So let's see what's going on here. Yeah, so I guess we're, uh, if you're looking for writing screens today, then uh, I imagine it's Croatan or the Esselim who that you'll be checking out. So, all right. RPG Bob found me. Excellent. 
people are sharing information about how to find each other on Nano, which is great. Feel free, like I said, to friend me. Um, does it also talk about murder and cannibalistic pigs? Because if it's a link that doesn't talk about that, I'm not sure I can trust it. No, it talks about how writers are all insane and the ways in which we're all insane. And I, I saw this and laughed my fucking ass right off. So check it out. Yeah. I guess that was just my stream, says Craig. <laughs> yeah, it was a memorable stream. Yeah, it sure was. I was glad to be there for a change yesterday. It was great. Still coming to the streams. That's not an option. Great, says Cooley song. Can someone post a link to Nano, please? Yes, I can. In case it hasn't already been done. There you go. Ah, Kate, Black Megan already did it. Just accepted a bunch of friend requests on Nano. Please find me if you're interested. Search for writer Greg. I think I already friended you, but I'll try that too. I'll, I'll double check and make sure. Um... Dennis or Bob says, I found I get very little done on my streams, but I'm more than happy to run streams to help everyone else out. It's not wasted time for me. I don't get words on paper, but I do get other stuff done. Well, I was kind of hoping to get some, uh, you know, work done today, but actually this is much better use of my time talking about Nano, helping people prepare. I think I've convinced two people to join today. That's great. And, you know, cool, right? I'm... This is this is good this is good time. This is good use of my time to do this. So this is great. Siobhan is considering lengthening her stream to three hours. Awesome, but don't burn yourself out. I would enjoy it. You know what I would really enjoy is that if the gap that's typically between you and uh, um, Darth Nicholas were closed a bit, right? Personally, right? Just personally, I would really like to see that because then. You know, I basically have writing streams until I wanted to go to bed, which would be cool. So, but do what works for you, right? Yeah, <laughs> each song, same thing. I'm not getting anything else done, but I'm having fun doing it and it's useful. <clears throat> All right, Aegon has signed up. So that's three people. Yes. Awesome. Aegon on there. Okay, I'll look for you. Okay, Aegon, writer Greg, just to make sure. Uh, Dinosaur Bob already sent me the buddy request, so I can approve that. Esau. <laughs> Siobhan, I think you'll finish Nano in two weeks. She just freaking might. Because she's insane. And I love it. She's an inspiration to me, actually. I, I, I really... Uh, I was so excited about her overwhelming Nano success last year. Like, it just was the greatest thing. Okay, Brand is already on my list. Um, Aaron's on there too, by the way. Aaron Ree. Lorraine, good. Space Trash, Greg. This is Walking Dead Lover, by the way. Amelia Knight. Great, so who do I not have? Aegon? Right, so... I think I have to go find buddies or something. Where's the search buddies function? Find buddies, there we go. This may not show up yet because you just kind of signed up. Is that you here in the bottom, Aegon? Yeah, we are already uh, uh, nano buddies. Good. In summer camp, I had no trouble spitting out 2,000 word articles every day, says Dinosaur Bob. Stream or not, I'm not worried. Exactly. Siobhan agrees. That's the reason for lengthening. Just signed up for nano as DM stretch. Okay, cool. Greg cannot adjust streaming times due to employment and family scheduling. Pretty much maxed out. Fair enough. But don't worry, there's lots of us going to be streaming, so it's okay. 
Yeah, you already stream twice twice a day, Greg. You're good. I agree. Siobhan, you crazy. I agree with that too. Esong is uh, the one who said both of those. She's right. Still waiting for Lorraine to accept my buddy request. She probably hasn't been on the site yet. Dazzling Cat signed up. Mar Carol on Nano. Okay. All right. So yes, I got the right. Uh, well, let's connect. What the hell? Let's do it. Okay. I don't know if we ever reconnected after the site move there, uh, Author Goddess, so I'm going to double check and make sure. That is a smoking picture of you. Oh, you invited me. Okay, cool. Absolutely accept. Okay. I don't know why I didn't see that. Sorry about that. Well, now we're buddies. That really is a great picture of you. Holy shit. Okay. Um, DM. I gotta capitalize right now. DM stretch zero results okay maybe you have a space let's try that nope okay do we have an underscore maybe we are not capitalized and then again maybe it just hasn't shown up yet because sometimes it doesn't do that there you are. All right. Dazzlin Cat, right? Or was that a typo? Did I get that right? Yes. Excellent. Oh, we are buddies already. Okay, good. I thought we were. I was just double checking. Good, good, good. Oh, capital. All right. I can do that. Really? I got an N in there. I don't understand. Thought I did anyway. Let's see. Daz L I N K A T. Yeah. I got a raid. Maybe it just didn't show up yet. I don't know. You might have to search me. Sable underscore Arati. I like this, guys. That's how you find me on Nano. Okay. And who else am I missing here? Darth Nicholas. I don't know if we're already Nano buddies or not. I will try the various incarnations. There we go. Nope, but now we are. Well, at least you guys accept the invitation. Cool. Now I'm going to go to my buddies and, you know, answer the buddies' requests that may be lurking. Oh, sorry, that's your profile, not mine. Okay, we're gonna be here a while, so you know what? I'm gonna go here. Except Delian, absolutely.
All right. I'll try Daz one more time. There we go. Just took a minute to come up. Okay, in order for us to be buddies, those of you who I've um, marked there to be invited to be buddies, you have to accept my invitation. Otherwise, it don't work. So. All right. Well, we have had a great discussion about Nano today, guys. We have 15 minutes left to the stream. Right? So I think what I'm going to do is spend the last 15 minutes. Oh, hell, why am I dropping a lot of frames? Ugh. Okay. I think I'm going to spend the last 15 minutes um, showing you what I've been doing for timelines for my novel with the World Anvil Timelines feature, which is freaking cool. <clears throat> like, I, yeah, great. Okay. Timelines plus manuscripts equals brilliant, okay? But I'm also going to show you something really cool that uh, I was talking about the uh, timers that Darth Nicholas so kindly made for me, and I expected to be able to show it to you today, the Diane Wright's timer, but I'm not going to get the chance, so instead I'm just going to briefly show you the screen. See? It's right there. And see how it uh, matches my uh, display screen? Because he's amazing. So I just wanted to show you that. Now, let's look at what we're doing with timelines. Okay. So this is a complicated uh, um, combination of things. So here's the novel that I'm editing in manuscripts, right? And if you look and you click on settings, you'll see that every section has a link to a part of the manuscript. This is also true of entire chapters, right? If you go to the chapter heading and you go to the gear, right? It has a link to the entire chapter. This means you can create a timeline where you can link each and every part individually of your manuscript by scene if you want to. So this is sort of what I'm doing. Timeline of the novels. Now I have to show it to you on stream because it's set to private because this is something that's for patrons but you can also look at it right now if you uh, go to my world page and my community hub and set yourself the assigned group, group A, I've read a few good elves. And why it's private for that reason is so that you don't get spoilers, right? So I'm not going to look at anything in detail, but a timeline of the novels. This is the first scene that happens in the novel. This is a personal event. I've got the date here, the time of day. The time of day is important because there's a couple things that happen on that day that are separate scenes and I need to have them in order, right? But I have this, this line here. Okay, this is my actual date in the calendar, but I have two major calendars in my universe. One of them is the one that's sort of the standard calendar of space, which is the Elven calendar, the Avalonian calendar, because the Elves were probably the first people in space. So it's the most widely used. It has no real relevance to any actual space-time stuff, depending on what system you're in, right? Obviously, years are going to be slightly different lengths at the very least, right? You know, yeah, so, but this is the kind of a standard date, you know, star date, whatever. This is, this is how we keep track of standard dates in the space in my universe, right? Simply, you know, for the same reason that UTC is centered on Greenwich, England, right? So this date here is the date in, in the Fomorian calendar. That's the other side of the war. They have their own calendar system. Artie of the Hummelverse made me this. This is a date converter and I've got links to it in the calendar articles for both of them. This is my Avalonian calendar article, right? So I've got the calendar displayed here so I can see the date and some of the celestial uh, um, bodies of different worlds. These are not on the same world, by the way. They're just important uh, worlds in the setting. So like this moon is a moon of Peridot 
right, which is one world, and then this moon is a moon of uh, Talasia, which is another world, right? So it's just those might be important depending on if you're on those planets, so I keep track of them there. But this is the key here. This link that I have in this, you know, blue allowed box here, right, and which is also present on the Fomorian calendar article, will take you to this page, which is hosted actually on my personal website. And then you can put in the date, any date in the Avalonian calendar, and it will tell you what the date is in the Fomorian calendar and vice versa. And this is very helpful to me because later on, I need to start keeping track of the Fomorian dates. They're not relevant for a couple of books, but they will be. So I've put that there in an H4 heading just to keep track of it. Now, when they revamp the calendar system, we will be able to sync two calendars. So I will not require this, but right now that's useful. Then here's a summary of the event with links to important characters. Well, they will be links when I get the articles written. And here's the key. This is the manuscript link right here. Scene 1-1 one, one in A Few Good L's. Now, why is it written like that? Because, uh, here's my editing page. When you go to chapter one, Right, I have titles for these different folders, right? And I've numbered them like that so that you know, kind of like the Bible does, right? It's chapter one, scene one. This is chapter two, scene, or chapter one, scene two. And that way I know exactly where I am, right? And they all have titles like that, which I've set up in manuscripts specifically. Right? Notice here, chapter 16, which I'm currently working on in the timeline, has three scenes. Right, So 16.1, 16.2, 16.3. These pictures in between uh, form a little star thing which shows up on my manuscript to split up the scene. Right? Oh, that's the wrong timeline. But if you click on this, it takes you to that scene in the manuscript. Oh, I didn't realize these titles showed up now. Oh, interesting. Oh, well. They didn't for a while, but now they do. That's interesting. Okay. Demi must change that. So yeah, so I can just look up where that happens, and this is helping me keep track of the sequence of events. You can also link a related location. So in this case, the um, a place called Skyreach is where this takes place. Additional timelines. So this also appears in the timeline specifically of the novel A Few Good Elves, right? And related article, which standardly I've been putting as A Few Good Elves, but I'm going to change as I move things around, right? I might not even have related articles there. So most of these, you can tell by the blue, is personal, uh, you know, stuff of personal significance. I see that people are chatting back and forth about connecting on Nano, which is great. Yes, author goddess is Kali Mama. Correct. All right, so yeah. Right, these uh, blue ones here are like trivial or personal events. Right, these little icons show you what kind of event. This is a personal failure. As you can tell, he has a lot of those in his early years. Now where this can get really cool, like, okay, there are some where I put the entire chapter, like here, right? This entire chapter is uh, associated with the scene. So, 
like or that particular event so i didn't bother creating separate entries for each of the different scenes not every scene requires a link just when they're different And as you can see here, this is, this is one that's different because this is of local significance. Shondar broke a record. So that was important, not just for him, but for, you know, the local area. This is another one, a record set there. Okay, this is a big important event. This is an era changing event. The second interstellar war is declared. Now this is where it gets really cool because additional timelines, timeline of a few good elves, history of the interstellar wars right so there's another one here yeah check this one out okay this is a uh, um, national event that's important you can tell by the yellow color right and it's in four different timelines because all of those are different timelines that I'm keeping track of but at any time I can click on this Right? And it'll take me to the important place in the novel where this is occurring. So I'm very happy with this. This is really helping me put things in order. And this is an important part of what I'm working on for nano prep. Right? Um, I have to make sure I have a very clear idea of the um, uh, temporal the succession of events in order to get shit right for book three. It's one of the things that has been hampering me in finishing it because I keep recalculating and recalculating when things occur. When I have this timeline done, I'll know. And then all I have to do is look it up, right? And since I'm creating a master timeline for all the novels, plus a timeline for each individual book, it will be really easy to look up. On this master timeline here of all the novels, and I should say actually uh, a timeline of the Toy Soldier Saga fiction rather than the novels, so I'll rename it, but because there's novellas, there's sto short stories, right? And I should have them all in here too but once I've had that done right then I'll have like at the very top of all this I'll have like you know an era beginning called a few good elves right and that'll be all the events in a few good elves or I might not because uh in uh homefront a lot of the events overlap about three novels so maybe I won't but And since I'm going to put all of this somewhere in, uh, like, on manuscripts, then it will all be easily accessible for me to look at, even if I don't publish it right away. My intention with the short stories and novellas is to create a separate manuscript for them. I'm chewing on the title, but so far the working title that was recommended in my Discord was uh, Like Toy Soldiers. Right. And that's going to be just the shorter fiction. Right. Which in itself will be about as long as one of the novels when it's all put together. And then that way I can reference that. Most of that stuff's already written. So but I don't intend to release that to the public or even my patrons until after book three is released. So because otherwise it would be a fucking spoiler on a massive level. And I don't want to do that to you. It's not fair. And um, yes, I'm still working on my uh, challenge. This is kind of where I am right now. I've been chewing on it, but I'll work on that more on Sunday. Today was all about the writing, right? So. Yeah. All right, I think everybody's connected now. Author goddess with similar taste in authors, that's cool.
Daz has a picture even. That's excellent. Black Maggot is off to get ready for his stream. Uh, we intend to raid him, so I'm basically going to hold out till he appears. Um, yeah. So I guess that's all I wanted to discuss in particular today. If anybody has anything else that they would like to talk about in terms of, like, NaNoWriMo, writing, um, timelines, manuscripts, let me have it. I'm glad we're all connecting on NaNoWriMo. I'm really looking forward to this NaNo. I think this is going to be the best ever with the whole Anvilite community and all the friends I've made over the course of the last year. Thank you very much, Barbarossa. Last couple of drops out of that. How do nano buddies work? Good question. Okay, I'll show you. Um, okay, main screen. Make me write a paragraph. Uh, okay. All right, first I have to do that because that's how the rules work. So, uh, edit organization. I'll work on the solstice pact, which I'm still coming up with right now. Um, my problem is I'm still kind of chewing on the different uh, factions in it. Aaron is going to make me a new map for wormholes and whatnot. I, I have a systems map, right? This is, okay, here's like the secret map with all the stuff on it, but I've changed this considerably, plus it's a small map right? It's not a very big sized uh, graphic. So we're making a new map with stars representing the different systems. All these connections are kind of wormhole connections. Um, the numbers represent speed ratings, more or less, like how long it takes, roughly. So the lower the number, the quicker the trip. Or actually, no, the higher the number, the quicker the trip, pardon me, right? So some of these are like lightning fast, and some of them take for bloody ever. I don't remember. It was one way or the other. <laughs> I don't remember what Aaron was doing with it. But anyway, I'm. this is kind of my our loose map of the known systems that we're dealing with in the setting. And I'm trying to get an idea of which factions were part of what. And I haven't even made up all the factions yet. You know what? I'll start with... Here we go. Constituent members. Uh, orcs. Uh, goblins. Trolls. Giants. Overs. Okay, the, the, these will, of course, it, it's not like all the members of this race in space decided to do this. It's more like, you know, these various orcish factions decided to do this. These various goblin factions decided to do this. This is actually going to end up being a very complicated map. And I suppose I should have a thing mixed Fomorian powers. The pact was formed between uh, a variety of uh, scattered Fomorian populations, Fomorian and Fomorian controlled 
top emulations. This should actually be a key value list, I think. One of those things that appears in the sidebar. Are we going to be an Anvilite writing group? Yes. Okay, I'm going to take a break from this right now here, Barbarossa. I think that's about the time I would have spent on a paragraph with those various uh, ideas there. And thank you for redeeming that. But I think it's important that I show people how writing buddies work. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So community, no, my nano buddies, that's what I want. Okay. So when somebody is linked as your buddy, let's see, I'm gonna pester Brianna, okay? You can click on their name, right? And then you can, <laughs> aw, that's sweet. Yeah. Um, and the cover looks great. Um, so you can check on what they're working on, right? How far they are in the pro process. Oh, I didn't realize you could just carry on a new progress, a new project. Oh, shit. Neat. Okay, but you can check out like how they're doing and whatnot. Writing badges, you know, where they're at. And there used to be a way to send messages to, I guess you have to join groups now. But I think there was also a thing for messages. Just a second. I'm sorry. I'm figuring it all out because, ah, there we go. So when someone is your buddy, they also appear as someone you can send a direct message to, right? So we can chat back and forth about how we're doing. So let's look at my groups. Now this was a, a camp group that I created. I see a bunch of people are still in it. Nice. And I can I can add more. So if anybody would like to be in this group, I guess now we can continue that through the regular nano. This used to be something that was camp specific. But uh, let me know and I'll hit you up with an invitation because I can always expand the number of members too. So that's really neat. And, and this is, it just... If you don't link as uh, writing buddies, then a lot of these options to connect don't exist. So it's, uh, it's good to link as buddies so that you can. Right, so yeah, uh, Cosmic Worldsmiths was what I called the group and most people in it are Anvilites. Sure, you'll join that group? Okay, I'll invite you. Invite. Invitation sent. Sure, says Aegon. I'm in. Uh, me too, says Das. Okay. Anyway, 
and me and me <laughs> okay hold on here i think i better uh, expand my number of members i think i can do that just a second min edit settings All right, let's go for the full 20, what the hell, right? Dinosaur Bob. Oh, were we buddies yet? I don't know. If not, let's be buddies. I'm going to double check. <laughs> Esong says, nothing quite like being popular. I'm still not used to that. I was always the unpopular kid that had, like, no friends in school, so, you know. Yay! Dan Stretch just joined. Dazzle Cat says, makes it easier on us noobs that Sable is doing all the connecting work. Well, that's what I'm here for. That's kind of what the job is for, uh, you know, for being a municipal uh, liaison. And I love it. And why, you know, like that's what uh, that's what us vets are supposed to be doing, right? And just like how the experienced anvilites always help out the newbie people, right? So glad to do it. <laughs> Not a world anvil, says Esong. Aw. Yeah, same. I was the unpopular nerd, says Siobhan. That's cool. Okay. Okay, I'm going to double check and make sure we're buddies. I think we are. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so is uh, Black Maggot live yet, I wonder? Because I'm well over time here, and I got to go make a trip before things close at 5 o'clock. Yes, he is. Okay, so we're going to go raid Black Maggot. And thank you all so much for joining me for this wonderful uh, nano, mostly oriented uh, hype train, I guess, that we did today. Um... I'll be back on uh, Sunday for uh, Sable's World Forge, and I will spend some more time on the uh, on the challenge then, right? And probably do, uh, me if I get a chance, I'll do some timeline work there as well. Um, I uh, and we'll do more sprints, right? Um, Aaron will be on to um, Friday for. Oh yeah, right, and so will I for Ask an Old GM. I will be making an appearance so we can do our spicy chocolate eating because why not? Because it's fun. Um, yeah, and we're going to give that a try. He's going to eat like the stuff that apparently is like being tear gassed. I'm going to take like a little tiny corner of it. I can't eat it because I cannot have that much lactose. It's just not possible. I am going to take a bunch of lactose pills though and have some of it and then I'm going to eat like a uh, really hot spicy it's not as it's not as hot and spicy i don't think but a hot spicy chocolate that is uh lactose free so that is uh i'm you know i'm sorry to kind of be pussying out on that one but you know it's it's not because i'm afraid of the spice it's because my guts will not handle that kind of lactose it just i'm allergic to it it's not an intolerance it's an allergy and it sucks so all right so i'm doing the best i can all right, so we're going to raid Black Megan. And don't forget that our raid show is prepared to be boarded because we are the Sables Privateers. Yeah, your health is far more important. I, I cannot afford to do that to my guts for three days. It's just not worth it. It's just not. Thank you for understanding. Yeah. All right, so we're raiding Black Megan right now. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you on Friday, I hope. 
Have a good afternoon, everyone, morning or evening.